What's going on gamers? A lot of people have been asking me what I'm running on the Ark Hunter. It's definitely my second favorite build to run in this game. I've been playing nothing but Bonk Titan because it's just, you know, it's a bonk hammer. Just melee stuff. But did you know that on a Hunter, you can punch stuff just as good and go invis or get a nice juicy counter punch with the cross counter liar's handshake build. Also, we're going to be covering Assassin's Cowl, the do's and the don'ts of both builds. Star Eater Ark Hunter is doing crazy damage. So if you want to do crazy damage like this in the raid by the way i was on a tractor cannon helping the team juice the damage and just shooting a fusion rifle and still put up some decent numbers or melt champions like this in a master loss sector we'll sit tight and here we go want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor of this video mobilytics you can head on over to mobilytics click the link in the description down below and it explains my whole arc hunter build it explains to you how it works the gameplay loop, what exotics to run, what mods and armor, and there's multiple builds on the website you could check out as well. Thanks again for sponsoring today's video. But first, I wanted to cover the Liar's Handshake Hunter build. What's nice about these builds, I'm gonna be going over three different builds with you. Liar's Handshake, Assassin's Cowl, and Star Eaters, and they all use the same mods. So I made this pretty simple for you. I wanna break down how the Arc Hunter Super works, how you can learn about it and change some combos that I do in this gameplay. So first we're gonna go over the Gathering Storm Arc Super. This thing's nuts, throws the Arc Staff, jolts nearby targets. Now I wanna point out, this is just like a Wither Horde. So if you throw your Gathering Storm at a boss and your teammate does the same, one of the person's damage will not register and get fully juice. You could throw it at the boss and then someone throw it at the ground, but it is inconsistent. So usually what I do is I just make sure that there's only one gathering storm, so there's no issues. We're gonna be using Gambler's Dodge because when you perform a dodge next to an enemy, you get a fully recharge melee ability. Triple jump is what I prefer. Combination blow is really good for all three exotics you're gonna be using, like Star Eaters, Assassin's Cowl, and Liar's Handshake. So. It's a quick strike that temporarily increases your melee damage when defeating a target and it stacks up to three times. Your whole purpose of this build is to try and get combination blow times three, dodge near an enemy, get that punch ready to go. And then when you do this, your damage is gonna be increased. I forgot what the full percentage is when you tractor and you get combination blow times three. We're just gonna use a number of a thousand percent. I use pulse nades because the fragment that I'm using, I use spark of shock to done the overload champions with my grenades and I will explain how I'm killing the other champions here in a second. Flow state, when you defeat a jolted target, it makes you amplified. This is huge. You can run around, be more fast, being invis or closing distance on enemies or champions. Lethal current is a huge factor in this build. After dodging, your next melee attack has increased lunge range and it jolts the target. This is how you're gonna be stunning your unstoppable champions. And it does create a damaging aftershock. So when you dodge and then you melee, you're gonna kill that enemy and it's gonna give you like the Dune Marcher Titan feel. <laughs> Again, this is why I love this build so much. The fragments are gonna be Spark of Shock, Arc Grenades, Jolts, Targets, Spark of Resistance. When you're surrounded by Cabins, you are more resistant to incoming damage. So this is a punch melee build. You wanna be close quarters, so you're gonna take advantage of that damage resist. Feedback. If they melee you, you hit them with the KO punch. So when you take melee damage, it increases your outgoing melee damage. This is why it's part of the build. It increases your melee damage when you get hit. A spark of magnitude. Now this last fragment is optional. It's just, I figured since I'm getting back my grenades so fast, I wanted them to pulse the overloads and pairing like a pulse nade with a tractor cannon and your super all at once. I did a demonstration of that in this Lost Sector run, just absolutely annihilated those overloads. So I wanted to take advantage of it. I just wanna point out I'm running the same thing for all three exotics. I wanna talk about the weapons before I go over armor. I know a lot of people say that the one-two punch with Liar's Handshake got nerfed. Yes, it doesn't stack like it used to anymore, but it's still good because you have to understand when you're using a Liar's Handshake or even Assassin's Cowl, you're gonna be close on targets anyway. I know people use Wastelander, but I take advantage of one-two punch and auto-loading with this. I personally like the shotgun, but again, if you're like, well, I don't wanna miss out on the damage because Liar's Handshake, the cross counter isn't stacking as it used to with one-two punch anymore, so I'm gonna run something else, totally optional. I would have my Unforgiven on with Demolitionist Frenzy, but I have realized that a lot of people haven't farmed for this weapon in duality in the vault encounter. I would definitely go get one. It's one of my favorite subs. So I used 
a funnel web instead because I feel like most gamers have this. Tractor Cannon is very important for this build because you're debuffing an enemy before you punch it. So I recommend running Tractor for all three builds. Now, again, if you have on Star Eater for your Hunter, you could run a rocket, you know, Izanagi loadout or machine gun. But me personally, I just like debuffing my enemies before I punch them or throw my super so I can get more damage. Here's where I made this really easy. I'm going to go over all the mods of the armor pieces. But again, it's the same mods for all three builds. Here we go. I'm running on my helmet, double hands on with Dynamo. The reason why I wanted to choose Dynamo was it reduces my super cool down when using that class ability near targets the whole arc hunter build is dodging and then punching near enemies dodge punch dodge punch so i'm like hey i'll take advantage of that and then i wanted to run double hands on because i knew that my lightning is going to chain and defeat more targets after i hit that dodge and melee with that lethal current so i wanted to take advantage of getting the super Trust me, you do not need intellect for this build. I have 28. <laughs> I kept this simple and kept my stats with the mobility, resilience, and discipline because that's what I usually run on my solar and my void builds. But again, if you wanted to take some mobility away and give you a little bit more recov, it's up to you. But I just wanted to make sure that I have my resilience up at all times and discipline. Going into the gauntlets, again, this is the liar's handshake. Uh, Heavy-handed, this is huge. You have, uh, you have unlimited powerful melees. So when you're powerful melee, final blows, kill the enemy, you create orbs of power. And what happens when you pick up orbs of power? You get volatile flow. So unlimited volatile flow with this build as well. And let's just say you're not running a void weapon, you'll still have unlimited armor charges. Impact induction, causing damage with a melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. So this is a punchy build. Dodge punch, dodge punch, unlimited grenades too. Your chest piece is gonna be all about what you can fit. Uh, I was able with this build to run double solar resist and I wanted to do melee damage resist. So I think if you wanted to take one of these off or you don't have artifice armor and you can't squeeze this in, just run solar resist or void resist, you know, whatever activity you're doing that you need resist of. And I would definitely take advantage of melee damage resist because you're gonna be pushing champions. They're gonna be stomping boss stomps. You can bait stomps like I did in this run. I baited the boss to like stomp the ground. But again, you can put it on, take it off, see what you want to do. It's kind of up to you. With the surges, I am running double kinetic surge because I want my shotgun to do more damage. I know you're like, Clyde, it's a one-two punch shotgun. It doesn't need to do a lot of damage. But I'm running a shotgun with dual void weapons anyway, and I don't need my tractor to do more damage. I mean, I could. It's kind of funny when you just shoot them and you stun them with it, you know, because like if you tractor an enemy and then you punch them, it could stun lock them, but I have a void SMG on too. So I'm taking advantage of 10% for my SMG, 10% for my tractor and 17% with my shotgun. Again, those are all up to you. Class ability, this is huge, more orbs. When using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. So if you're running and gunning, dodge, and you wanted to shoot your guns, which, you know, that's no fun, you could make orbs of power. You could switch this out if you want for double bomber because you've reduced your grenade cooldown when using your class ability. It's up to you, but I just chose to run Reaper. I ran Healthy Finisher on the Liar's Handshake and Assassin's Cow because with the, with the Assassin's Cow helmet, you do want to hit finishers as well if you can to go invis. But even with the Liar's build, you might get a champion weak. And if you hit a finisher, it'll only consume one stack of armor charge and it will heal you. So what's so good about this? With Liar's Handshake, you're, you're just running over champions in this run. I just wanted to show you how I bait the champions, bait the adds, dodge, get that combination blow up. This first champion that you're about to see with this Liar's Handshake, I didn't even stun him at first. In Master, it's kind of hard to bait these champions and I wanted to show you. Now I know cross counter always isn't procking. Yes, it is annoying when cross counter doesn't proc because the whole purpose of Liar's is shotgun, melee, and then you melee again to get that cross counter stab you'll hear the sound effect it's kind of funny like when, when it doesn't reg i like running around with it this was a solo flawless master lost sector and these enemies hurt in here i didn't have any resist on these little stasis you know little taken guys they hurt and i was healing through it so when i stunned this champion finally he was already dead i hit the finisher when you're running up with liars as you see i'm approaching these two overload champions at the top i know there's an unstop there as well so I take advantage of throwing my, my nade to jolt him, my super shotgun meleeing tractor, and then dodging before the next unstop spawns to jolt him and absolutely destroy him. It's funny here because I talked about that boss stomp. When I get up there near the boss, I'm actually going to bait his stomp, tractor him, shotgun melee. And when you see me shotgun meleeing him with the liars on, you'll see the cross counter doesn't proc every time. I know it's annoying, but me personally, I love running liars. Take advantage of that. It's just like, like watch here in this clip, 
those enemies surround me in the run i i don't know what to do i'm getting frozen but i'm just punching i'm punching i'm punching and that cross counter is regging and actually healing me because cross counter regenerates health and deals extra damage and it's just kind of funny that like those enemies were trying so hard but they were meleeing me in my subclass the feedback the fragments i was running like the whole subclass worked as intended and i out healed them and was able to punch them and this was also attrition too in this in the lost sector so it was kind of annoying but again liar's handshake is different i feel like if you run assassin's cowl you want to take advantage of the invis so there is no wrong build here if you want to run assassin's cowl run it if you want to run liars and get a little bit more extra melee damage totally up to you so now we're going to be showing you the run of the assassin's cowl everything's the same dodge punch dodge punch dodge punch combination blow up the only difference is with assassin's cowl you have Vanishing Execution. Powered melee final blows grant invisibility and you restore a portion of your health and your shields. If you finish final blows against more powerful targets, it increases the duration of the invisibility and the amount of health and shields restored. So it's the same build, it's just sometimes you're not gonna get the juicy punches. As you see in this run with Assassin's Cowl, I do still melt champions in Master because I have combination blow times three up and I'm able to position myself a little better on the champions because I'm invis. You're still getting your super very, very quickly as you're taking advantage of the dynamo and the double hands on. And I'm able to sneak up on the champions a little better up on the cliff where the overloads are. I see that they're up there. I throw the nades. I'm able to jolt them, get more kills, stay invis, run and gun a little faster. But I did see in some of these kills that it might've taken me an extra punch or an extra shotgun or two to kill a champion is it a big difference no that's why i said there's no wrong way to run it it's like do you want the invis or you don't so i am giving props to both builds but when i get up to the top kill the bosses same thing here you're just staying invis punching you don't really have to use your weapons but again that's what's so nice about this is that i'm breaking it down to all three uh exotics really pertaining and juice in this class like i'm telling you our hunter is super fun right now and i'm and i'm enjoying this so much all right so now we're gonna talk about the star eater hunter build why is star eater scales so good well star eater scales has feast of light you gain additional super energy from orbs you pick up, which is huge. While your super energy is full, picking up an orb of power overcharges your super, causing you to gain a burst of healing when you cast your super. So that's nice. When you're about to be absolute, you could throw your super and heal. And also you get the super damage stacks. Feast of Light times four is huge. It does a lot of damage. A lot of hunters use it with blade barrage, which is insane. Although those knives don't hit regularly, you know, all the time and then you have your Gathering Storm. Well, I've been running Star Eaters a lot in the raids, but specifically, I love running it for the boss encounters, the planet boss or Nezerak. I'm just gonna show you a demonstration here with Nezerak. You're able to just run around. This is normal, by the way, but I've ran this build in Master. You just have to be a little bit more careful and weaken enemies with your guns. Kill adds, make orbs. Remember, every time you punch something, you're making an orb, so you're able to get Feast of light so easily all you're doing here is picking up orbs used to light times four getting ready for dps and it's easy to juice the reason why i'm doing decent amount of damage is because gathering storm actually does a lot of dps to this boss i don't know the exact number but if i wanted to give you a number it'd probably be around a million maybe even higher so all i'm doing here is tractoring the boss as soon as he takes damage hitting my fusion rifle shots what i'm about which i'm about to go over in a second and throwing the arc staff super directly at the boss when i know he's not going to teleport away and miss like i've done plenty of times so the fusion rifle i'm using is the iterative loop from niamuna i like running lead from gold and volt shot on this because volt shot for some reason is bug i don't know why but for some reason bosses this season are taking tick damage and damage over time do is hit the tractor on nez find an enemy around him shoot him reload proc volt shot and shoot him once that's it uh the role that i've wanted to craft is looted on the barrel i'm gonna go with accelerated coils for faster charge time lead from golden volt shot and i am gonna go with a charge time masterwork i did get it crafted but i need to level it up if you want to get an iterative loop just go to Niamuna and do the weapon quests on all three characters. There is a quest that Nimbus gives you. When you complete this quest, you will get three red frame fusions, so you don't have to go sit on the public events and patrols until you lose brain cells. Trust me, I've been there. But again, as you see in the damage numbers, this was all fusion rifle DPS. Everybody in the fire team just used their one-off supers if they had them, like Thunder Crash, uh, Blade Barrage. I used my Gathering Storm, and I just wanted to show you just with fusions. It's a one phase and gathering storm was on top 
because I was taking advantage of the highest DPS super and also using the Volt Shot. Easy to phase on Master. If it is properly organized for you guys to do a lot of damage on Master, you can one phase. I did the one phase with six Warlocks. So adding a Hunter and adding um, multiple rockets and fusions and whatever you're using is still good. So I hope you kind of understand how an Arc Hunter works now. I wanted to include all three exotics because I know if I did a Liar's build, people would be like, hey, Assassin's Cow. Hey, Arc Hunter's good with Star Eaters. Give me your honest thoughts. Tell me like, hey, Clyde, thanks for showcasing the Arc Hunter. Thanks for showing us multiple builds to run. You know, hey, Clyde, the video sucked. Just, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. But this is definitely my second favorite build to run right now. If I'm not on my Titan playing Solar or Strand, I'm on the Arc Hunter. And yeah, don't forget, guys, you can come watch the stream Monday through Saturday. I usually start around 1130 a.m. East Coast time. And I usually go to about eight o'clock. Thanks for watching all the YouTube videos. Come hang out in Twitch chat. Let me know you're from YouTube. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.